In this video, I'm going to show you how we built this affordable DIY thermostatically controlled wood kiln. A few months ago, I came across somebody giving away a few logs of cottonwood, which prompted me to build this kiln so that we could use them in future projects. So the first thing that I did was I set up the tools and we got to work cutting all the sheet material inside. on all the hardware for the doors and use pins as space. This is the finished box ready to become a wood kiln. It's made out of half inch OSB. If you would like plans on how to build this box let me know in the comments down below. So now that the first part of the box or the build is done in the box, now it's time to actually add the electronics. So we've got a fan, or I'm sorry, a heater. That heater will of course get it hot. We have a thermostat to control it. This is the relay for that thermostat. And a dehumidifier. So we can pull all the moisture out of the wood. Need an outlet. I actually need two outlets, so I gotta run to the store and grab another one. And a fan, so we can circulate all the air inside of the our kiln. I probably should explain at least a little bit what I plan on doing. So I'll have two outlets. This heater right here is a 110 heater, a little small one. And then I'll have this 110 heater switched on this thermostat here. And then I'll have a one outlet with constant power running the dehumidifier and the fan. It's actually very simple. So it's got switch, power for the unit, and a sensor. And the power input is 110. Huh. Okay. Yeah, I guess I'll feed it 110 and see if it blows up. But right there, 110 power. The mechanism for locking it on, simply cut the hole the same size as this box, put it in the hole, slide this on the back, and it should seat up with some clicks. And then that doesn't go anywhere. Put it on there pretty tight. It shouldn't wiggle. Alright, so that's that's super, super simple. So take a closer look at this relay and it is actually a DC controlled relay. I don't know if you can see that. 3 to 32 volts DC. It can switch AC, but it takes DC input and I'm not going to use it for this project. 
In the instructions to, for the thermostat, it says no more than 1100 watts. My heater is 1000 watts. So I'm just gonna switch it right, right off the thermostat, switch the heater. And it should work. Blow something up. I guess you'll probably never see this, but it should work. All right, first things first, when you figure out where we're gonna put this thermostat. I was thinking right here. Actually, I might. That is where I'm gonna put it, right there. Yeah, that'll be perfect. I'll mark some holes and then put it right there. You don't even know what I'm talking about. Should probably angle the camera. Right here. Should be about it right there. Right next to the switch that controls the actual ventilation fan. That will like filter the air in here when I'm running the CNC. I don't know if I mentioned that or not, but this whole table right here that we're building under is a CNC machine. I'll be using that in a future project. I got all this stuff off Amazon too, this, even this wire. It was cheap on Amazon. I'll leave a link to this too. This is, what is this? 16 gauge? No, not a specific type, but it's like really flexible. I didn't buy it for this. I bought it for a mini quad when I was building a while ago, but it will work for this. You don't know how to strip wire with a knife, kind of just stick it right there, roll it, and you should be able to peel it. My knife is really dull right now, which is not ideal for this. Strip wire. A quick way to run a power line or a speaker line or really any line that requires you to run two runs is to simply take it, take your line, run it as far as you need to go, pinch one side, fold it in half, go down until you get to the point, cut it off here. The only problem with that is now you have one line that's twice as long as you need, then you can just cut the lines and they'll be perfectly in half. Now you have a line for say positive and negative or hot and neutral. They are the same color. So I like to take I like to take a piece of tape and put on the hot side, always on the hot side. That way I know later when I come back, hot side has tape. Quick, that side, then this side. Then I'll be able to identify it after they're snaked all around and ran to where they need to go. And if I see a wire randomly that just has tape on it, I know that that wire is hot. Whatever the, um, whether it be hot because the power is on in the building, or it's hot because I ran a power line over there for a different use later, just a auxiliary power line, but I still know it's hot, and I can use it if I need to, or I can avoid it so I don't get dead. We have the fan hooked up to this main outlet, which should be solid power. We have the heater right here, blowing right on the temperature probe for the thermostat, which should be plugged into a switched outlet. When everything's all said and done, everything is buttoned up, we will have both the fan and the dehumidifier plugged into this main outlet right here, and then just the heater on the rear outlet. And this thermostat is wired into this main outlet, so it should have constant power as well. Now let me stand back, plug things in, and test them. Just double check and make sure that nothing is touching these wires. You want to tape those 
before we put them back in those covers there. And then, here we go. We've got heater, we have fan, and we have thermostat. Let's see. Set thermostat to 130. Set, it runs. It's at 105 right now. This is exactly what we want here. We want the thermostat to kick on, heat it up the machine. The fan's gonna stay on. The thermostat is on. I'm not sure if you can hear that. Not thermostat, the heater is on. And there it is, just clicked off. Heater is off, fan still running. This is exactly what we want. This is the perfect scenario. That never happens. Everything worked first try. Okay, so after a week, these are the results. Got this piece that I didn't put in. 27% on that side. About 23% on that side. All right, this right here is one that looks like it's closer from the same tree. We're at 14%. Yeah, that's closer to actually when I put it in there. I think average was about 16% on all the ones that I put in there. We're at 23% on that one, on that side. This side was face down on the concrete. This side was open to the air. Well, we just had 16%. I guess, yeah. So there's that. This is one that's been inside the wood kiln for one week. Not quite ready. Maybe leave it in there for one more week. I don't know if you can see that. 10.5. That is 9.5, 6-ish. Other side. Mm, 16. Alright, so I'll leave it in there for another week, and it should be ready to work. From the middle of the pile, this piece that was not in the kiln, this side is showing 45.8, 45 45.1, 46 46.0, and this side 44.6. Twenty eight point six forty seven inside the kiln. This piece is seven, eight, eight, six, 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 seven. Eight. So this one's ready to use. You want about seven to nine to eight. 
to machine properly. Two weeks in the kiln, but now this is all ready to go.